The second type of data that we can transfer from MaxSurf to Ship Constructor are hull lines. These then become the boundaries of parts in Ship Constructor. They become construction lines in the structure drawings. First we make sure that we've got our units set up correctly, so we choose the units command and make sure they're set to millimetres. We also choose the precision command and make sure that precision is set to highest so that we have enough points in the polyline curves of the contours to accurately define the hull model. Finally, we turn off all of the contours except the ones that we want to send to Ship Constructor. So typically we'll send over sections to become frames, water lines to become decks, and buttock lines to become longitudinal bulkheads. With that, those contours displayed, we can then go to the File menu and choose Export, and choose the option to export DXF. We choose the 3D DXF option. We use a one-to-one -one scale, and the type of data that we're going to export is polyline data. Because we're working in millimetres, we set our precision to one decimal place. That means our data is going to be accurate to 0.1 of a millimetre. If we set it to more than that, we'll find that we'll get round off error in the subsequent decimal places, and this may result in some snapping problems inside AutoCAD. It's also a good idea to turn on the option to remove redundant points. That makes sure we don't get too many points in areas of the ship which are straight. We click OK and we can save that file to disk. So I've created that DXF file. I can now switch over to Ship Constructor and it's normal to import the lines into a unit drawing. I have a unit drawing open here and I can go to the insert menu, choose to insert a block and choose that DXF file that I've created to be my inserted block. I've already chosen my zero point in MaxSurf to align to the zero point in Ship Constructor so I don't have to change that and my scale is already at one to one but I do want to explode the block when I insert it. That block gets inserted and you can see all of the lines from MaxSurf have come into the unit drawing and they are 3D lines on the hull. So the next step is usually to select all of the polylines on a particular section and then to create a planar group from them. So we use the create planar group command. You notice that the name has automatically been created from the design grid name in MaxSurf and it's just a case of choosing the throw direction. Turn on the option to keep the geometry and that geometry will be transferred to the drawing. Then an option may appear asking you if you wish to join together multiple curves. Each section in MaxSurf will span across a surface and if those surfaces are bonded together you'll want to turn on that option to automatically join those curves together. You'll get a message that the curves have been found and a planar group has been created from those curves. If we now go to the Ship Constructor Navigator and we go to the Structure section we'll see that our group for this frame has been created and we can open up that group and we'll see that the geometry from MaxSurf has been imported and automatically joined together to form a construction line around the boundary of our hull. If we list the type of that uh, data we'll see that this is a hull trace construction line that we can then use for modelling parts in Ship Constructor. That completes our demonstration of MaxSurf lines transferred to Ship Constructor. Thank you for watching.